So I played this course two months ago. It's time to see if all the practice has worked off. Time to beat my score. What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are out here today at McCord Park. This is one of the first courses I ever played. And honestly, this was the first course that I played a full round and kept score. I shot nine down. So we're gonna see how much the practice has worked see what I shoot today. It's a really, really short course. We're playing from the front tees. So the first hole is 129 feet, super short, like I said. This is a great course to basically work on my approach game. Most of these holes, I should be able to get up and down if I want to be elite level. We're gonna see how well I do today. We got the get freaky zone on hole one. Let's go. I'm gonna throw a forehand here because you have this tree off to the right. It shouldn't come into play but the forehand's just wide open and you have that kind of stop of the tree there. If I can just throw a little hyzer and it bounces over, it's fine. If it slams into the tree, it's basically a tap in. Oh, and it skipped over. Should be a tap in. So I just got back from Memorial. I went out there for the week to kind of spectate. I'm back home with Kelsey, me and her actually just celebrated our one year anniversary. It flew by super fast, so it's fun for her to be out here with me to spend some time together. Hopefully I'll be playing in Waco. A lot of people have been wondering what my next tournament is, or my first tournament rather. Hopefully I can play in Waco. And I think this course is gonna be great for like all the upshots at Waco. Cause like I said, a lot of these holes are super, super short, but you gotta know how to get up and down from all areas. So, we're off to a good start. With that little like seven footer there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna see kind of how my short game's been working because I've been working so much on distance and off the tee that I wanna make sure my short game's still kind of up to par and uh, we'll see how the round goes. Let me know in the comments predictions of this round. Nine down was what I shot two months ago. So let me know in the comments what you guys think I'm gonna shoot today. I wanna say one thing though about McCord Park, guys. If it has rained in the last like two weeks, do not come out here. Right now it's manageable. There are gonna be some areas that are super muddy, but just a heads up, if you wanna come out and play, it's a great course, but definitely don't come out and play when it is just done raining. Hole number two, it says, a par, it says it's a par four. We're gonna play all these as a par three, I think. But it's 372 feet, so it's actually a decent throw. You can see there's kind of two gaps you can go. You can either do the forehand play, which is down the left-hand side between these, or you can kind of sneak over on the left-hand side of the tee box and shoot it down there for the backhand play. Now this water that you guys see over here, it does kind of trickle all the way up and to the right and behind the basket. So I think the ideal play is to try to throw a backhand and have it skip up there uh, to give you a look. But I think I'm gonna go with, yeah, I'm gonna go with the backhand. Try to throw it out there, have it skip in, hopefully miss all the trees. Oh my gosh. That was uh, what you'd call maybe an indecisive throw. I was thinking forehand and then the last minute I went backhand. Didn't really commit to it. I think the play here is just to kind of lay up one in between, in between these two trees and just have a little tap in par putt. And that will be fine. You can see uh, just how close this water is. So what, about 10, 11 feet, and then it's just down here. So I think that played in the, had a little bit to play with my tee shot because I was worried about throwing it too far right and going in the water. But we made a par, and I almost died on a stump. Another shorty here, it's 138 feet. Not too many trees to play with, but you can see if you go too far right, you're down in the water. One thing I'm starting to notice, your eyes make things look further than they actually are. There's a couple times where I'll play a hole and I think I have to get super close. When in fact, like on this hole, if I just am inside this tree on the left and up a little bit, I have a, inside a circle one putt all day. So instead of trying to get super close to the basket here, I'm gonna play the safe play out left. Don't even put the water into play and should have a good chance at birdie. Get freaky zone. Oh my gosh. That 
got a really bad kick off the tree, but again, I aimed super far left, so I'm fine. <laughs> I got nervous for a split second. All right, living on the edge here a little bit, but like I said, got maybe 15 feet or so for a birdie. One thing I've, I've really learned too, not learned, but noticed, you're a lot more quiet. Well, golf is a more quiet a sport. You kind of got to stay centered. Oh, but no. since, since the beginning? Yeah. Oh, I've quieted down a little bit? Yeah, just a tad. Just wait until I start making some birdie bombs. I think, honestly, one of those reasons, too, is we have like a better microphone now. And back in the day, our microphones oh, yeah. weren't good. You, so you I had to like project. And I'm already like a loud person. So when I like project, it gets like super loud. Really loud, yeah. So Kelsey just asked me, how do I know where the next hole is? The simple answer to that is I've played this course a couple times, so I actually know. But if you don't, the app UDisc is what the is the app I'm using to calculate my score, keep all my stats. It also has like the GPS layout of most courses. And you can also see using UDisc, you can also see all the courses in your area. So if you don't have the app, download that. I think it's great. And it even tells me that this hole is not 544 feet, it is 400 feet. Now, the incentive here also to get to the basket is there's a huge mud pit up there. So we're gonna go full power Zeus because I do not want to be short and in the mud. Not enough height to finish the flight. That rhymed. I might just become high. All right. Brody is walking up to his disc. He is pin high, just a little to the right, but I think he can get it pretty close to the pin. It's super muddy out here, so I'm glad he didn't land in the mud. My gosh! Wow! Boom! Wow! How many feet was that? About like 70? 70 feet! I think that's, a, I think that's a technically my first throw in. That's if awesome. Anything outside of circle two, this, which is 66 feet, is a throw in. That's great, babe. Good job. We're on hole number five now. It says 362, which might be pretty accurate actually and this is a tough one this is one where i actually don't really know what is the perfect throw perfect disc too but i think with the wind kind of at my back i'm gonna lead on trying to go up and over these trees you can see the basket all the way down there it's kind of a tight gap to shoot it all the way through so i think i'm gonna try to go far left side of the tee pad out big hyzer with the zeus and then hopefully get that nice fade in um, and get somewhat into circle one. Miss it, miss it. It hit it. Dang, that was a good rip though. I'm okay with that. Result was not good, but I feel like I ripped it. A little left to right wind. That's going to push the disc down. A little uphill, so I'm gonna aim for the band and pull. This is just probably outside. No, this is probably inside circle, too. Get up. I need to start. I need to start working on those because I feel like I'm not giving those a chance. I need to start giving those a chance to go in. If he doesn't make this one, folks, he doesn't get dinner. Oh, you want to try? You try and make that. No, Talking going? trash. Keep going. Keep going. All right, right there. No pressure. Oh my! Zero revolutions on the disc. And I wasn't even looking. I was staring at the camera. 
Hole six, par three, straightforward, 150 feet. Literally no reason to not make birdie here. Um, I'm, I got my get freaky, but one thing I'm gonna be working on is I got a new throwing putter I'm trying out. So the Crystal Luna, I liked it, but the Crystal just is, was a little too slick. So I'm trying out this Titanium Roach now. So this is my actual throw. And then we're gonna throw this afterwards, maybe a little ace run action. A little short, but should be a putt. So that's what I'm really looking for for a throwing putter, is something that is gonna go basically dead straight especially playing in the woods. That's gonna be something that's really, really useful shot is having something that I know that I can basically throw on a little bit of a hyzer and have it kind of just fly dead straight and then a soft fade to the left. Okay, Birdie's got 17 feet to the basket. Uh, I think he would like to be a lot closer, but he does these putts all the time in the garage, so hopefully he makes it. There you go. Garage putt! Yeah, those are ones that you ideally don't have to have too many. I think it's okay to have a slip up every once in a while, but 100 feet, 150 feet dead straight. This might be a hole that I come back to after this round and throw at about 20 times and try to get all 20 inside of 15 feet. Hole number seven, 204 feet. You have two options basically. You can kind of throw a forehand out to the left hand side and try to get it to skip kind of into the basket or you can take a little bit of a tighter gap on the right hand side with the backhand but I think the play it's, it's a little bit more technical because there is water so you have to have better speed control I think going with the forehand because you don't want to have it go into the water but I think that's the more open shot so I've got a uh, the jawbreaker zone Parked. You said that was in the water? I thought that was no, going to be in the water. That's, that's a good shot. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like there's not as much back there. There's a little bit more back there than meets the eye. It's a little hill. It's closer than I thought. Oh my god. <laughs> it must have just hit and slid down a little bit more. But inside a circle. I'm sorry I gasped, but I've never seen that before in my life. Someone just threw one and it it twirled in that drain. Like it, it just twirled for It went in the drain. It went in the drain. Oh that's sick. Hole number eight. Again, they're all par threes. 151 feet. You can kind of see it if you go out here. You can kind of see it just behind those trees. So it's really just a get freaky zone. Throw it right at these trees, let it dump right. I was talking to Paul about this and I think me and him kind of have the same mindset. And it's one thing that I probably am not gonna make that many hole in ones because I don't really go for it. This one, for example, you could definitely run this and try to give it a chance of going in, but I'd much rather just throw it kind of into the ground short of that tree, let it skip up and have a tap in birdie. I don't know, let me know. Do you guys always go when you have a hole like this do you go for the hole in one or do you going to go for like the automatic birdie? All right, a little left of where I wanted, but it should be safe. Straddle putt! Good job. Well, a little left but it's still good and we are on pace one hole left we are currently six down with one hole to play on the front nine if you're still watching guys i really appreciate you subscribing to the channel if you haven't already make sure you subscribe that helps out a lot and the other thing is just the algorithm 
they love likes, man. So if you're enjoying these videos, make sure you drop a like down below. This last hole will be the end of part one. Part two will come very shortly after that. All right, final hole here on the front nine. Hole number nine. This is another one that they had to kind of redo because of the buildings over here. It used to be a big dog leg to the left, but I'm sure uh, they didn't want people chucking discs into this building. So now you can see it's kind of just a straightforward. It's got a little bit of low ceiling. If you're, if you're not too careful, these uh, branches up here on the right-hand side of this tree, they will get you. So you want to throw this one super kind of low, get it out there. Uh, I'm going with the jawbreaker zone on this one. Throw it over the backhand. Yeah, that'll do, pig. That'll do. I'd say that's a pretty good. Yeah, good, good one. Clean up. Got a nice. I think it hit somewhere in there. Got a nice little skip forward. Just about 11 feet. Oh, that was very close. There you go. Took. So, uh, okay, I learned something there. Don't take any putt for granted. Uh, but that's gonna do it guys. We'll be back for part two. I think that puts me at five or six under seven under somewhere like that uh, Not a bad start the back nine. There's a couple more wooded holes that are pretty sweet that require a little bit more of a technical shot But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in part two for the back nine and Yeah, keep swinging them this